Industry lab links. Topic awareness in the field of space biotechnology. ITQW hat. Do you understand by Bitcoin hard fork? Is hard fork a good development? Examine 200 words. Live demon dick telegraph introduction. What is it? A digital currency used to make payments of any value without fees. It runs on the blockchain, the decentralized ledger kept running by miners whose powerful computers crunch transactions and are rewarded in bitcoins. Who invented it? Satoshi Nakamoto, the secretive internet user, invented bitcoin in 2008 before it went online in 2009. Many attempts to identify Satoshi have been made without conclusive proof. What's it for? People see value in money free from government control and the fees bank <coughs> charge, as well as the block <coughs> to verify transactions. Bitcoin has been seen as a tool for private, anonymous transactions, and it's the payment of choice for drug deals and other illegal purchases. Is it worth anything? Yes. As of July 2017, there were around 16.5 M Bitcoins in circulation. In March 2017, the value of a Bitcoin that $1,268 exceeded that of an ounce of gold $1,233 for the first time. What is Bitcoin Cash? In August 2017, the blockchain forked to support another cryptocurrency, Bitcoin Cash, which is optimized slightly differently. People who held Bitcoin received an equal value of Bitcoin Cash following this hard fork. H-A-R-D-F-O-R-K. The hard fork is a change to the Bitcoin protocol that makes previously invalid blocks slash transactions valid and therefore requires all users to upgrade. Any alteration to Bitcoin which changes the block structure including block hash difficulty rules or increases the set of valid transactions is a hard fork. However, some of these changes can be implemented by having the new transaction appear to older clients as a pay to anybody transaction of a special form and getting the miners to agree to reject blocks including the pay to anybody transaction unless the transaction validates under the new rules. This is known as a soft fork and how P2SH was added to Bitcoin. www.insightsinindia.com 38 www.insightsinindia.com the community supporting Bitcoin has long tried to avoid the so-called hard fork splitting the currency into... On Tuesday, it happened anyhow. The idea behind the change is to speed up transactions and, consequently, mainstream acceptance It's a good development. The bigger the size of the block, the more transactions can be validated in a second. For Bitcoin, with a maximum block size of 1 megabyte, it's just 2 or 3 transactions per second. The Bitcoin payment can't take an hour to clear. Bitcoin's slowness also leads to the proliferation of other cryptocurrencies, or altcoins, some of which claim higher processing speed as an advantage. It will help in greater proliferation and acceptance of Bitcoins. Reduction in transaction fee, competitive edge in cryptocurrency market, smoother transactions, increased use on daily basis are some of the other windfall gains. However, some concerns can be a lot of chaos, confusion, disruption, unfamiliarity in users to adapt to the changes made. Loss of Bitcoins in non-updated process, division of Bitcoins may hamper its credibility. Less liquidity, discretion in hands of miner, overall low confidence in cryptocurrency by people makes it further hard to accept them. Bitcoin technology is still in infant state and its cash use is relatively untested so its adoption and intensive use still cause concerns. Changes, disruption, evolution is a part of any new revolutionary technology like Bitcoins. Hence concepts like hard fork must be accepted and environment of learning, cooperation and subsequent necessary modifications must be sought towards it. You write a note on various techniques used in DNA profiling. 200 words live in and what is DNA profiling? DNA profiling is the process where a specific DNA pattern, called a profile, is obtained from a person or sample of bodily tissue even though all human beings are unique most of our dna is actually identical to other people's dna however specific regions vary highly between people these regions are called polymorphic differences in these variable regions between people are known as polymorphisms each of us inherits a unique combination of polymorphisms from our parents DNA polymorphisms can be analyzed to give a DNA profile. 
Human DNA profiles can be used to identify the origin of a DNA sample at a crime scene or test for parentage. Uses of DNA profiling A DNA profile or fingerprint represents a small proportion of a person's overall DNA, but it's enough for two profiles to be compared to prove or disprove that they came from the same person or from related persons. Therefore, DNA profiles are commonly used for DNA identification. A DNA profile can also be used in posthumous disputes, inheritance issues, for example. One of the reasons for this is that DNA is much more difficult to forge than other forms of identification, and the coded information it contains is highly resilient. In addition, because a DNA profile provides a genetic fingerprint, this can be used to identify perpetrators of crimes. This is because profiles can be produced from DNA samples found at crime scenes and compared to the DNA profiles of suspects to prove or disprove the match. www.insightsinindia.com 39 www.insightsinindia.com The main types of DNA profiling methods in use at this time are 1. RFLP Restriction Fragment Length Polymorphism RFLP analyzes the length of the strands of the DNA molecules with repeating base pair patterns. DNA molecules are long strands bound tightly wound in chromosomes which are contained in the nucleus of each human cell. Within each DNA strand are numbers of genes that determine the particular characteristics of an individual. While about 5% of the gene compositions on DNA contain this type of genetic information, the other 95% do not. However, of the 95%, these non-coding genes contain identifiable repetitive sequences of base pairs, which are called variable number tandem repeats BNTR. To extract a DNA fingerprint, a southern blot is performed and the DNA is analyzed via a radioactive probe. The restriction fragment length polymorphism analysis is used to detect the repeated sequences by determining a specific pattern to the BNTR, which becomes a person's DNA fingerprint. The drawback with this system is that it requires a considerable amount of DNA in order to be used. 2. PCR The polymerase chain reaction PCR was developed by Kerry Millis of the Cetus Corporation in 1983 for use in research laboratories for establishing hereditary authentication. The PCR analysis amplified the DNA molecules using a smaller sample. On the forensic front, the PCR found to be useful in identifying DNA fingerprints in criminal matters and in paternity tests because it requires less amounts of DNA because it makes identical copies of the DNA sample. The PCR analysis amplified isolated regions on the strands of the DNA under examination. The drawback was that it was not as discriminating as the RFLP. 3. HAMP-LP Amplified Fragment Length Polymorphism HAMP-LP came into vogue in the 90s and is still popular in the smaller countries involved in the process of DNA fingerprinting. It remains attractive because of its relatively less complicated operation and the cost-effectiveness of the procedure. By using the PCR analysis to amplify the many satellites loci of the human cell, this method proved quicker in recovery than the RFLP. However, due to the use of gel in its analysis phase, there are issues of bunching of the VTR bands, causing misidentifications in the process. For strength, the short tandem repeat strength methodology for extracting DNA is the system most widely used form of DNA profiling. This system is based on the features of PCR, as it utilizes specific areas that have short sequential repeat DNA. The strength analyzes how many times base pairs repeat themselves on a particular location on a strand of DNA. The big advantage in this method is that the DNA comparisons can match the possibilities into an almost endless range. DNA profiling has been extremely successful for use in the personal identification of criminal suspects, DNA testing for ethnicity, identification of the deceased, as well as court-approved paternity tests. DNA, however, still poses issues because the VNTRs are not evenly distributed in all people because they are inherited. In addition, there is still the imperfect human element as the final voice in the administration of all DNA fingerprinting procedures. However, as forensic scientists continue their research, there appears to be no limit to the value a DNA test can render to society.